student physicists. This is a solution video for homework for question seven. By far the most requested, uh, the most requested video uh, of the session. So what I wanted to do was show off uh, the solution and really talk through the important features of this. Uh, this is a car driving around a banked curve. We have friction with the ground and we want to find the maximum speed the car can drive without slipping. That means that we need forces that are going to provide a centripetal acceleration. And the key point on this problem, hands down, the most important fact is that the centripetal acceleration points towards the center of the circle, and it points directly towards the center. It does not point down the ramp. And when we do that, my first rule of drawing coordinate axes is to always pick a coordinate axis to minimize the number of directions of acceleration I have to consider. In this case, I have an acceleration that's kind of flat with respect to the ground, so I'm going to pick x and y so that they are parallel to and perpendicular to the ground, respectively. Then I'm going to draw a free body diagram. And for my free body diagram, I have the forces on the car. I have a weight, mg. I have a normal force from the ramp, n and I have a static friction force. And I'm choosing a static friction force pointing down the ramp. The reason for that is that the combination of the normal and the static friction force are going to add together constructively to give us this maximum possible centripetal acceleration. Now, as I've drawn it, this angle is theta. So I can go ahead and say that here's a line parallel to the ground. And therefore, this alternate interior angle here is going to be theta. And then, considering this, this angle here is going to be theta. This should just be a, di a dashed line. So let's go here and go. There, totally a dashed line now. OK, now what we're going to do is write down f equals ma in both directions and then solve for what we need to know. First, I've got my sum of my forces in my x direction. And that's going to be the normal force. And the projection of the normal force there is going to be given by the sine component and sine theta. And then the friction force provides a component here. So that's going to be plus mu s times n times, and then that's the cosine of this vector, so cos theta. And I know that that's going to be the mass times the centripetal acceleration. And that centripetal acceleration has to be v squared over r. So that's mv squared over r. You might be tempted to call this a centrifugal force, but uh, I want to say that this is just the mass times the centripetal acceleration and not introduce fictitious forces and non-inertial frames of reference. So then I write down my sum of forces in the y direction. There I have a component of the normal force pushing in the vertical direction. So that's going to be n cos theta. Now I actually have two forces pushing down. I have the vertical component of the friction force and mg. So I'm going to write this as mu s. And then this is going to be times n. And then this is going to be times the sine of theta minus mg. And the car isn't moving up or down. So we're going to set that to be equal to 0. Cool. So my general strategy here is going to identify the normal force from the y equation and substitute it into my x equation, getting rid of what we don't know, and then solving this for v. Therefore, let's go ahead and solve f, uh, sum of f of y. And then we get, I'm going to start out by pushing mg to the other side and cos theta minus mu s times n sine theta is equal to mg. I'm going to factor out a normal force, cos theta, minus mu s sine theta, sine arg, mu s sine theta. And that's equal to mg. And then to get n by itself, I have to divide by it. So the normal force now we know is mg divided by cos theta minus mu s sine theta. Excellent. 
So that's given, and now we're going to return to our x equation up here and substitute this in for my normal force. I'm going to cleverly note that n sine theta plus mu s cos theta, sorry, mu s n cos theta is the same thing as n times sine theta plus mu s cos theta theta. And that's just for neatness sake because now I'm going to plug in this expression up here for n. In it goes. Uh, and so that is equal to mg over cos theta minus mu s sine theta. Okay. And all that is time. That was the n. Now I get the rest of the term here in brackets. Sine theta plus mu s cos theta. OK, so that was the left-hand side that I've massaged. And over here, I've got a right-hand side, which is going to be equal to mv squared on r. <gasps> Important note, I've got an m on one side and on the other side of the equation. And I can just cancel those out. And that's good, because I don't know what the car's mass is. That It better not show up in the problem. Now I can solve for v by multiplying both sides by r and then take the square root. So then v squared is going to be equal to rg times sine theta plus mu s cos theta, all divided by cos theta minus mu s sine theta. All right. And then I can take a square root because I and feeling with it today. OK, and I'm going to be fancy and say that I know that I can write square roots as fractional exponents, because I'm, I don't know, I'm just wild like that. All right, so much copying over. Minus mu s sine theta. Here comes square root, answer secured. Well, at this point, I can just go up and plug in some serious numbers. And let's say, OK, v, this we know, is a big square bracket, 142.4 meters, times g, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. And then we get into the trig, sine of 0.418 minus, oh, nope plus 0 0.717 times the cosine of 0 0.418. All right, well, that's that looks like a numerator. And then we jot down the same thing, but with uh, different numbers and trig terms. So I guess technically not the same thing, but it's a very similar pattern of term. Give me credit for that, maybe. Minus, uh, oop. I uh, think. I'm substituting in. I don't need to hold off on my mu. So that's 0 0.717 times the sine of 0 0.418. Whew. Square bracket, square root. Lots of tedium in the calculator, and then 48.8 meters per second emerges triumphant from the ashes of algebra. There we go. OK, oh, I just wanted to make a quick recap. Pretty much everything below this line is algebra. The physics is everything that's up here. And the key point is that that centripetal acceleration points to the center, not down the ramp. And then we get the sum of the normal force and the static friction force both pushing inward to give us this maximum possible centripetal acceleration. So remember all of this stuff. And then it's just really the same problem pattern we always see. Write down the forces in both directions, solve for two equations in two unknowns, and then substitute in our values right at the end. And that should always get us there, at least for Newton's problems.